Lithuania and Latvia are ruining their relationship with Russia, while Ukraine is improving its relationship with the Kremlin, even though Ukraine owes money to a failed USSR 2.0 political project called the CIS. Russian media outlets muddy the water. But this is Stop Fake, the place where we filter out fakes from the Kremlin's disinformation machine. So let's get to it. Lithuania and Estonia, the only two European Union countries willing to ruin their relationship with Russia because they've been speaking out against the Kremlin policy of handing out Russian passports like candy in areas of the Donbass currently occupied by the Russian army and their proxies. At least that's what Russian media were spewing in the wake of statements issued by the foreign ministers of the two Baltic states saying that they would not recognize these passports. One Russian political analyst called the move a public relations stunt and declared that the EU does not care about Russia giving out passports to Ukrainians living under Russian occupation. So what is this all about? Well, earlier this year on April the 24th, Russian President Vladimir Putin signed a decree that allows residents of the occupied territories of Donetsk and Luhansk regions in eastern Ukraine to obtain Russian passports under a simplified procedure. And this was recognized by the international community as another act of aggression by the Kremlin against Ukraine. In fact, Ukraine's international partners quickly condemned this latest Russian move, despite Russian media claims that the European Union is somehow indifferent on this issue. The U.S. Embassy in Ukraine described Putin's decree as absurd and destabilizing, while Special Representative Kurt Volker called the move provocative and contrary to the Minsk agreements. Meanwhile, French Ambassador Isabel Dumont also said the move contradicts the peace agreements and, during the EU summit in June, European Union member states expressed their support for Ukraine and collectively condemned Russia's actions. And not surprisingly, Russian media conveniently forgot to mention that Brussels is preparing retaliatory measures that will not recognize Russian passports issued in contradiction of the Minsk agreements. Estonia has already taken that decision, as has Lithuania, and both countries are actively lobbying for such non-recognition to become official EU policy. Sputnik RT Gazeta.ru Komsomolskaya Pravda had a moment of schizophrenia induced by their own disinformation. They were busy this week disseminating fake stories claiming that although Ukraine closed its airspace to Russian aircraft in 2015, Ukraine nevertheless was allowing Russian planes access. What happened? Well, because of a fierce thunderstorm on August the 7th, a Russian aircraft flying from Bari, Italy to Moscow requested permission to fly over Ukraine, and the Lviv Air Traffic Control Center granted the flight permission. In a Facebook post, Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova thanked Ukraine for allowing the flight through, and Russia's Federation Council Committee on Foreign Affairs Representative Vladimir Jabarov called the decision by Ukrainian air traffic controllers humane. Here's the problem. Even a humane decision can be turned into a propaganda trick by Russian media as they rushed to interpret this one event as a step towards improved relations between the two countries. So was the ban on Russian aircraft in Ukrainian airspace ignored? No, because the reality is, according to Ukraine's air traffic regulatory body, the State Air Traffic Services Enterprise, allowing the Russian flight to fly through Ukrainian airspace was a decision guided by the rules of Ukraine's State Aviation Service, which state that Russian Federation registered aircraft can be allowed into Ukrainian airspace to circumvent dangerous weather conditions. The ban on Russian flights through Ukrainian territory has been in effect as of November 26, 2015, and remains in effect today. So allowing the Russian plane to fly through Ukrainian airspace was not an active individual initiative or largesse, but simply one that adheres to existing legislation and civil aviation rules. The website Ukraina.ru, the premier purveyor of propaganda, published a story claiming that Ukraine has not been paying fees to the Commonwealth of Independent States, the CIS, since 2014, and that although Ukraine does not have a representative to the organization, it adheres to a number of CIS agreements. And the Russian Foreign Ministry, meanwhile, claims that Ukraine owes the CIS 300 million rubles, or some four and a half million dollars in back fees. Now, legally, Ukraine is not a member of the CIS. Why? 
because back in 1993, Kiev did not sign the CIS statute. However, Ukraine is one of the founders of this commonwealth. And Ukraine's foreign ministry, meanwhile, denied that Ukraine owes the CIS any back fees. Russia's foreign ministry claims that not only does Ukraine owe the CIS back dues, but its refusal to fulfill its CIS obligations limits the resources of the Commonwealth and increases the financial burden on other countries, primarily Russia, which accounts for 75% of CIS expenditures. The ministry also claims that the CIS Executive Committee has not received any official notification of Ukraine's exit from the CIS. Ukraine's foreign ministry called the Russian claims of back fees and the absence of official exit notification blatant distortions. Deputy Foreign Minister Vasil Bondar told the Ukraine Forum News Agency, quote, The Kremlin keeps trying to return Ukraine under its control, including through the CIS. Ukraine was never a CIS member because we did not sign the CIS charter. We were a founding member and a participant, which made sense at a certain time, but now, for six years running, we have not signed any CIS documents. Bonnar also pointed out that Ukraine has significantly decreased its representation at CIS meetings. In 2018, then-President Petro Poroshenko signed a decree recalling all Ukrainian representatives from all statutory CIS bodies. After the CIS refused to adopt any political decisions regarding Russia's annexation of Crimea, Ukraine drastically reduced any cooperation with the body. Then, in February 2019, Ukraine's ambassador to Belarus, Ihor Kizim, announced that Ukraine had completed the process of withdrawing from CIS coordinating bodies and was working to end its participation in agreements concluded within this Commonwealth structure. That's it for this week. You can find much more dissected disinformation on the Stop Fake website. Be vigilant, look out for fakes, and remember, if you spot any disinformation about Ukraine, forward it to us for a truth autopsy. I'm Marco Supran, and this is Stop Fake. Thanks for watching.